And since it is the top of the hour on a Wednesday, it is time to bring in our buddy Dylan Butler, who uh, Dylan, by the way, has been able to see. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Dylan, uh, well, first off, hi, welcome back. <laughs> uh, are they, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're, they're building Dylan Butler estates, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I can't see it from out here in Suffolk County, but um, yeah, I think all systems appear to be go. So uh, how is it? uh, I mean, right now, obviously, it's just a bunch of uh, tall pieces of metal being stuck into the air with no connections to one another. But uh, to finally have all of this finally happening where you could have NYCFC with a permanent fixed location and not having to go to either Hartford or st john's or yankee stadium or city field i mean just as long as everything keeps right on going it's we're getting closer to the day where nyc is locked into one place that actually might be an undersized soccer stadium and you know what's gonna be cool too john is that um when they play their portion of their schedule this year at city field like you you'll be able to see it right like it's right next door so fans can can you know, see the different things that are being built and the different stages that it is in. So, um, however, um, uh, maybe it's, it's my New York, uh, jadedness, but, uh, (laughs) for me, there is no celebrating anything. Uh, there's no champagne, um, popped until, uh, you walk into the building and the match is being played. So understood um, there, there's too much, uh, in, involving construction and this city and potential delays. <laughs> However, I will say the fact that it's privately funded, um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, that, um, you know, as long as there's no additional red tape, which is a big if, yes. um, I think they'll get it done earlier than projected. Um, cause there's always, <clears throat> there's always these, uh, these caveats, these bonuses put in, um, Hey, listen, you guys get this job done ahead of schedule. You know, you get X, uh, six, seven figure bonus. Right. So, um, I would suspect that's probably in the cards. I I'd imagine they'd love to, it's at this point, maybe not possible, but I, I think, in a perfect world, they'd love to have something up by World Cup, so it could be like a training facility. So, yes, a uh, couple of other things. I know that we we've got to get into the the Newcastle situation. And by the way, sorry, sorry, going back for a second, like, do, like I hope you get a chance, and perhaps I will host you um, um, for this. But like, dude, the 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 food tour that we can go on. In, in Queens, man, like the authentic uh, Colombian, Mexican, um, uh, even down like uh, not only maybe two miles away, there's um, these, these, there is these uh, Himalayan uh, momos. Wow. They're like dumplings. They're, they're tremendous food trucks, like um, the culinary Argentine steakhouse, like, John, I got you, buddy. <sighs> See now, when when Jason and Mike are up there before me, you, you definitely have to take them on this tour because Mike 100%. is Mike Mike is a massive foodie, and, and Jason is of the same uh, of the same ilk. So a great Peruvian chicken place. Not oh, too far. I mean, yeah, you honestly, legitimately have um, made. <laughs> Well, I mean, I haven't had breakfast yet, so I'm gassed yeah, up. Neither have I, right? <laughs> but, but no doubt, you you really could do the the tour of tours with uh, with Mike and Jason before uh, everybody comes up. Uh, a couple of things I know that we need to talk about. We need to talk about Newcastle and uh, FFP and Miguel Almiron and everybody on the outs and everybody being sold just to make up for FFP. But did you see the valuations for uh, from Sportico? come out for the new uh, the new MLS rankings of who's the the most the most valued franchise in the league did you see that come out this morning I did not um I'm trying to remember if I if I saw the previous one I mean I think LAFC was up there 
previously, but I wanted to Miami jump them. Yeah, Miami. Well, Miami did a big jump. LAFC is still number one. Okay. You now have four teams that are, according to Sportico, and we're uh, probably two weeks away from the Forbes valuation coming out. But now four teams are worth a billion dollars. Uh, Inter Miami is one of those. Messi and friends had, according to Sportico, a 70 plus percent jump in value to go north of a billion dollars. And that's without even their own stadium. Yes. And they included they included other assets like real estate and things like that as a part of all of the, the valuation in general. And LAFC is still number one. They've boosted. And the well, top- how did you not do it? Uh, do the one when you said one billion dollars? How did you not do that in your Doctor Evil voice? What? Well, then I would <laughs> I would have had to have one million dollars. <laughs> then you'd sit there and you go billion, billion. <laughs> uh, but you, you end up with LAFC at number one. The top six teams on this list all had an, a net increase of over fifteen percent worth year to year. Uh, Atlanta United is number two. They're like one point one or something like that 1.05 then it was inter miami Messi and friends at three and lag still at number four at a billion dollars sure so you now have four teams with their assets with their real estate with their holdings with other you know other subsequent clubs and things like that that they're tied to you now have four teams that are worth a billion dollars in this league and that was last time i checked not their buy-in price when they wanted to start these uh, these adventures, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, Messi and friends jacking up the overall worth of the the league by about thirty percent. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm sure when the league made this incredibly complicated uh, contract, uh, this was part of what was in in mind, right? When you when you when you speak to all the owners and all the all the shareholders and. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's great, right? For 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 the league overall. So, uh, more eyes, more worldwide eyes, uh, more focus means more bucks. But like all those teams you mentioned, obviously, look, you, they've got their own stadium. They're not having to pay rent, um, you know, for their stadiums. Uh, it'll be interesting, I think, to see where NYCFC falls out when they get their own uh, stadium as well. I, they were I, I, they I, were like eight hundred and forty million. Yeah, they'll 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 crack that B, I think, when they get the the stadium for sure. Crack that B. I'll have to remember that. <laughs> crack the B. Um, the bottom the bottom grouping, and no real surprises. And this is going from the basement up. Montreal was last at four forty. Then you had Colorado. Vancouver, the Revs, Orlando, RSL, Dallas, Chicago, Houston, and the Quakes. That's your bottom. That's your bottom ten in the league right now. Montreal dead blank and last. Colorado, Vancouver going up from there. The Revs, Orlando, RSL, Dallas, Chicago, Houston, and San Jose. No real surprises in that group. I would have thought that maybe the Revs would have been valued a little more. Because of the facility that they're in, the real estate, et cetera. But they're down They're One, two, they're like fourth from bottom right now. Shocking to me anyway. That's what happens when you lose the Toby Keith bar. This is true. When you um, lose that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, good. that's a good question. I mean, it, my first thought was, oh, well, they're in. It's not their stadium, but it is their stadium. But it kind of isn't like... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how that how that how that works out. Unless they maybe because they're, because they're not in like Boston proper. Yeah. Like a lot of those clubs you mentioned, right? Um, and even Montreal. Like I've I've been out there. Like it's not, you know, it's it's uh, a little bit of a trek to, you know, the the, the city, the main part of the city. So. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of those teams you mentioned were are on the outskirts. Um, not Orlando, though. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so your uh, so the numbers in the top ten: LAFC up to one point one five, Atlanta United one point oh five, Inter Miami, Messi and friends at one point oh two, LAG at one. They all cracked that B. We'll have to remember that. That's going to be our. Yeah. Answer. And by yeah. the way, when 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 they get their stadium, Miami, holy Ooh. smoke! Uh, NYC fifth at eight forty. Up 22%. Austin was the surprise to me. They're up to six in Sportico wow. at 
at 800 million, up 27 percent. Then that means that Seattle went down to 795, Toronto went down to 725, DC United down to 720, and Portland down to number 10 at 715. So that's those. That's your. Where are the Sounders in that? Sorry. Uh, Sounders were seven at 795, up 10 percent year to year. Uh, average value of franchises six hundred and seventy-eight million, up sixteen percent. Total revenue of two billion, up twenty-seven percent. And so that's that's where you are with your ten. And uh, twenty-nine teams worth a total of nineteen point seven billion, including real estate and team-related businesses held by owners such as NWSL clubs. So that was where. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was where they they kind of threw all that stuff in. Uh, we also were getting into the whole ticket price deal. And with Messi and Friends and the, the touring the touring band. Yes. It is uh, <clears throat> at Jiha right now, and we were looking at the get-in price at Arrowhead. Get-in price, nosebleed, 300 level end zones, 115. But then you get into like the, the the supporter section stuff, the general admission in the end zones, lower levels, like 225 to 240. Then there were some that were like $3,000. I guess they do your laundry and give you a bath or something. <laughs> you get catered lunch and dinner or whatever. You get and, you get uh, you get Taylor to sing you a song. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing. You know, it, that could be a part of it, too. But with. Ticket prices and or mess. The Kelsey brothers to take the shirts off and, and oh, get you some beers. I, I don't. I don't need that visual. <laughs> it, it was. It was bad enough when one of them did it, uh, but now apparently, uh, allegedly, they're going to be getting uh, Chiefs uh, handbags that are like male handbags by Louis Vuitton <laughs> gifts uh, from from, uh, from T Swift for uh, all the fun times that she's having. I love. Uh, I do too. I mean, I look. It's look. She's a celebrity girlfriend. She's having fun. I don't care. I just love how, like, manly man, middle America guy is so uncomfortable with this. Like, it's great. <laughs> like, it's like, why? It's like, why are you uncomfortable? She's she's a girlfriend. It just so yes. happens she's one of the richest people on the planet. Yes, but I, and I and I don't care. No, I, I literally do not care. And the fact that. Yeah, that uh, she got to wear one of Christian Juice Check's creations and has now created a, a storm with that. I'd like to have like a Charlie Joyner or a Dan Fouts one. I think that'd be awesome. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. I dig that. If if she would go retro with some of her designs, I would yeah. absolutely like it. Uh, but with with the ticket price thing yes. at, at Jiha right now, uh, we we looked at the schedule and right now there are five venues that are football venues where the NFL team plays and the MLS team plays. There's only one instance right now where a club has decided to switch venues and go from 18,000 to 76,000 and right. it's at, and it's at Jiha and people are getting up in arms about ticket prices for this venue and I'm going it's assumed risk yeah if you if you want to drop that if you want to drop that B on 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 those kinds of tickets that's on you and, and I mean we looked at the schedule. The game is in the, it's in a normal part of the schedule. The game, the game at Arrowhead, it literally, they play the week before they'll play a week after you got to keep an eye on schedule compression, but it's all about supply and demand for me in these cases. It's like, look, if sporting has set their price point, people will either tell you, yeah, we're interested or yeah, we're not by people purchasing the tickets. hundred percent. And yeah, no, it's, 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 listen, it's all supply and demand. Like, so who, <clears throat> who cares? Like if you, if, if people aren't buying the tickets, then it forces the price to go down. They're not going to play in front of an empty stadium and guess what? They'll get it. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause it'll be, you know, Hey, I really wanted to see Messi. All right. Well, okay, fine. It's a one-off. We'll spend this money. Yeah. You know, I can't, I can't fault them. I mean, it's all across every, you know, try to go to a Broadway show for less than $200, right? Good luck. It just, it, uh, it, it be what it be. You know? uh -huh. so. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, that's why you go to, that's why you go to TKTS, you know, it, it, 
Yeah, seriously, I mean, if you're if you're looking for a show and you're just wanting to parachute into something, you either go to the theater, camp out, wait for a production hold or, or things to get turned in, or go to TKTS at like three thirty in the afternoon and see what's available, and then dive in there. That's the beauty of the secondary ticket market. See, since this is a wall pass Wednesday, I'll put this to you. Uh oh. Um, and 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 others. Um, so I was, I, I'm a, I'm a New York Rangers fan, right? So they uh they've been good you know they're they're a good team they, they'll make the playoffs I, I my schedule being what it is like i don't i get to maybe two or three games in a season but then i don't even think about the playoffs because the oh. ticket prices are just outrageous right yeah but even now the regular season like i'm easily spending 125 dollars for 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 a ticket oh. so i'm thinking like is it a profitable almost side business to get season tickets. Absolutely. And then you have them. Um, again, I would maybe only like it's brutal for more. I like I, I'm I'm a, I'm a hour and fifteen minute train ride into into Manhattan from where I am. So um, you know to do that on the regular like it's just it's crazy. So. Um, I, I, I would think because of their location in the middle of New York City, um, because they're good and because tourists will then go to see maybe their team, uh-huh. um, I do wonder if it's a if it's a if it's potentially a profitable venture. I, I mean, obviously, yes, when it gets to the playoffs, it 100 percent is right. So, yeah, absolutely. So then this would be a situation where I would imagine you would check the balance on your plastic and purchase the tickets on your credit card so that way you have a record of it and if anything goes wrong it's there and then you can you know pay it off and whittle it down and do whatever you know um no it's i i would i see the value what would kill me is you become a day trader right Mm -hmm. because you're constantly checking like all right what what is the row next to me what is that guy selling his tickets for on StubHub? oh wait a minute you know, he, he put his at 150, mine's were at 175. I got it, you know, like, uh, yeah, that would, that would be stressful. And you, yeah, <laughs> you've got to sit there and figure out, okay, what what's my margin? Yeah, what, what, what can I afford to, what can I afford to lose in these situations? Or is it all strictly profit? And if I'm just making 25 or 50 bucks on the Columbus game, right? And then I make a hundred bucks a ticket on the, the Pittsburgh game, is it worth it in the end? Or am I going to the Columbus game or am I going, you know, like if Edmonton's on a hot streak like they are now, then the fact that you might have sat on a, on a two pairs, of, uh, a pair of tickets, you might get something there. So, no, yeah. it's it, it is truly an it is truly a day traders nightmare. And the but- funny thing is, I would not like I wouldn't base going on the opponent. It's about my availability. <laughs> like it's like, ah. Okay. You know, they can be playing, you know, the Islanders, but if it's a day I've got a broadcast or something, you know, I <laughs> can't do it. Uh, I, I, uh, I absolutely, I, I see the merit in that. I see the merit in Rangers season tickets. I absolutely do as, as a, as a profit making venture, but you don't want James Dolan to sit there and, and go, uh, excuse me, you only showed up for three of your 41 games. <laughs> It's like he's got his facial recognition technology, and right. like, okay, that's not Dylan Butler. <laughs> You're not allowed to have your season tickets anymore. That's that's a former boss of mine, oh, uh, Dominus Omnis, my friend. Whew. I missed you, Varsity, uh, and Cablevision, and all that. Uh huh. Yes, and uh, Emilio says the reselling game is difficult. You will have a hard time making profits. Yeah, I, see, Emilio, I kind of feel that. Like, and and plus, you get like I I didn't know it from the seller portion but like these whether it's Ticketmaster, StubHub they're hitting you on the or I knew it from a buyer perspective I didn't know that from a seller like they hit you as well as a seller yeah. uh-huh yeah yeah that's they, they're gonna ding you for their little surcharge either way they're gonna get their piece of the action so you have to sit there and think about their piece of the action in addition to your piece of the action plus your intended profit margin yeah for each and every element. God, this has given me a headache. I was a business major in college and a minor in communication, but still, this is uh, 
I don't know. I might need to. I might need to have my <laughs> my uh, retired cousin just like here. Take this over. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and Hutch, Hutch reminds us of the convenience fees. Yeah, it's not very convenient. <laughs> it's convenient for Ticketmaster yeah. and the broker, but it ain't for the rest of us having to do the math. Uh, what else has been going on last couple of weeks in Major League Soccer that has uh, struck your fancy? Oh, by the way, yesterday uh, we were all up in arms. Oh, okay. Um, Messi and friends, they're, they've played their first two matches. They've only scored one goal. They've lost both of them, and obviously the world's falling apart. Yeah, they're just going to be horrible this year, clearly. Um, based on, you know, because preseason is always a perfect indicator for the regular season. <laughs> Yeah, we got into that yesterday. Um, and what what does your gut tell you about the the referee situation? Yeah, that's going to be a dicey one, I think. I, it's uh, I got to imagine they get <clears throat> something across before, but it's it's uh, it's getting late early here, right? Like we're um, less than a month. Looking at my calendar here, less than a month away from the season. So correct. What would it be? What would it? What would you? Could you envision a world where we have substitute officials for a while? Oh my God, no! Because there's, listen, uh, even the best. Like, I don't know who you would have on your power rankings of MLS officials, but even the best officials are highly scrutinized in MLS. Elfast. Can you imagine, like some, like you said, <laughs> substitute officials, substitute bar <laughs> as well? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> I'm like, who's even like, who would even be in the bar booth, right? Like, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it, it, you 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 bring in. Uh, well, I mean, honestly, it might have to be a. Oh, wow. I was going to say, it's like, how do you try to figure out? Yeah, I mean, VAR and AVAR, you might have to scrap your AVARs just because of a lack of personnel. And do you bring in somebody from, I mean, it, it, you know, I would have said Howard Webb, but he wandered off. Yeah. Who do you bring in for VAR? I mean, that's a hell of a question. Because even your like USL official, like these are all tied in. It's the same group. Yeah. College officials, maybe I don't know. That's the thing; you'd have to go to college because, but they don't, but they don't do bar, right? No, uh, yeah, it's a, it's like, oh, so what am I looking at here? Uh, can you can you toggle that back for me? But but yeah, who do you get to to work the technology? Much less, I mean, who do you get to to be var? Much less work the technology in the rooms. Do you get yeah, some there's training involved? And I mean, yeah. but yeah, just it. it I, but the, the negotiations, it's like. Uh, okay, how about a three or a four percent increase? No, ninety. <laughs> okay, how about how about five percent? No, ninety. Uh, yeah, you're sitting there going, okay, I, yeah, I see this going well. Messi's uh, in the league. Messi's in the league now. Everything goes up. Yes, exactly. Everything does. Uh, any uh, transactions over the last couple of weeks since you haven't been on? Sit there and strike your fancy. Coaches, coaches coming in, coaches leaving. Uh, anything strike your fancy? Yeah, I mean, listen, I and, and I wrote. Um... I wrote this story this past week for OSDB Sports. There you go. There's the point. I, I, I'm like just about on the Rapids bandwagon. I'm just oh. about there. Like I feel like I'm a like one more maybe signing away from being absolutely all in. But I, I, every move that they've made uh, – has got me excited. Like this is a team or an organization that, you know, we rightfully so crushed, right. With, um, <laughs> not spending and then spending wrongly when they did spend. And you've spent um, poorly. Look, their fan base obviously was up in arms and walked out and protest. And, you know, it was at its lowest really last year. And, um, they're showing that they will spend, right? I'm, I, you know, when we see the numbers come out from the players association, probably mid season, <clears throat> uh, Mihailovic and Stefan, like they're going to be pretty highly up there. So, um, 
their wage bill, which, uh, you know, was it was in like the New York Red Bulls area, um, not the lowest, not anywhere near the highest, obviously, but still bottom third, um, uh, will will move up. And um, I'm 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 watching them closely that they, they've been for me the, in, in teams and in preseason like they've been to me the most intriguing. Like Atlanta's made moves and smart moves. Yeah. But you've expected that from Atlanta. Like, you know, like they'll identify the problem, they'll fix it, and they'll be better for it. Like, so that's not a surprise. So when you see them, oh hey, we we have a need. Okay, let's fill it. Like, but we didn't really necessarily expect it, right? From Colorado. So that's refreshing to me. It's like, what is, who is this Colorado and what have you done with Colorado? Yeah, right. Uh, it's just, I mean, you you look at, but then again, they lose their preseason opener three one, so it's probably not going to be. Oh right. yes, everything everything is done. <laughs> everything is done. We have nothing nothing left with you. So I mean, literally, it's Omir Fernandez, Sam Vines, Zach Steffen, Georgie Mihailovic, and uh, Jasper Lafelson from uh, RSL. So I mean, that's you, you've actually spent some money. Who are you people? Yeah, right. Chris Arnold now, at the door. You know, again, you, you've got Kevin Cabral, which not a, a good signing there, right? You, right. You've, you've got a DP number nine who doesn't score goals so as well. So, That's strange. like, I don't know. You know, like, you, you – uh, if they could do something with those guys and then, you know, swing uh, for a number nine, uh, I think now you're talking. What the hell's going on with Minnesota? Oh, they're just hanging out. They're just they're just chilling. <laughs> they have a nice beer garden at their stadium. So I just I, what in the ever loving blue hell is going on in, in Minnesota? I, like I, just, I said, you you know clearly you can't do any business, um, you know when when you're in England because um, you can do it virtually. There's you, no, no, obviously you can't. It's impossible. God, I, it must be the time change. It has to be. I just it, you, all right. So let me let me let me see if let me see if I've if, if I've recapped this right. Okay, so you dismiss Adrian Heath with a couple of matches left in the regular season. You weren't making the playoffs, but you dismissed him anyway. So you have your substitute teacher, your interim, who was the head coach of the twos. Uh, Loons two head coach Sean McCauley basically says in January I'm out. Now you're on your second substitute teacher, which is cool. According to the front office of Minnesota United and your chief soccer officer, whom you hired in November, has yet to come to this particular, he's yet to come to the colonies. He's still over there. Apparently he was supposed to show up last week, which is now this week, and he's supposed to like meet players and stuff. Uh, the guy didn't want to... He wanted to save meeting players until he had a face-to-face -face opportunity to do it. And that still hasn't happened. And Timu Puki and Will Trapp have said publicly that you know, they like, you know, to know their teammates and their new boss, maybe. Like is this guy like is he is he a strict like nine to five guy? So he's like, you know what? It's like, mate, we can't make it work because in England. I'm done. You know, nine o'clock in the morning is is uh, it's like, bruh, that that's like three in the morning for y'all. That's when my day starts. Yeah, I mean, we could do, we could we can meet you guys, but it's gonna be three in the morning. Yeah, and so then you know, five o'clock is it's uh, let's see, so it's it's eleven. It's his day, his work day is three a.m. to eleven a.m. local time. <laughs> right. I've got I've got morning business hours. In Minneapolis. I'm in England still waiting for my work visa, which is another thing entirely. It's like you're waiting for your work visa. You have been waiting this all this time for it to process. And you're still over there. Yeah, you can do things virtually. And okay. I just, I, 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 I've got to put them at the bottom of every possible blanking thing. And, and you also don't have for the, uh, the the second year in a row, your your leading scorer. I mean, he he's it's uh it's there you re, you you renicknamed him Reynoso again for the second <laughs> year in a row. 
And, and I mean, it's like you, you've got a, a D mid from Herediano who's in on loan and your super draft pick who you haven't signed yet. Although if I'm right now, so I'm like, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll get there as soon as uh, my boss gets there. <laughs> it's like he shows up. <laughs> yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then before you go, one more thing. Uh, what's up with Newcastle? You still have your all injured starting 11 and your injured, uh-huh. injured starting 11. Miggy looks like he might be heading to uh, the league that we neither condone, endorse, nor promote. Good for and, Atlanta, though. Yeah, it is. 20 to 25% on the sell-on. Um, then uh, Kieran Trippier looks like their offer number three from Bayern is on the table. And Callum Wilson might be uh, looked at as well. So it's busy times for you to trim your FFP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, love the FFP. Um, it's so... It, <laughs> I don't have the time to like I 100% get FFP right I absolutely know that but like they've got owners that that want to spend like how I don't know what the formula is to get out from under this then right like if you're not and maybe there isn't one and maybe it's maybe this league is just set up for the four or five clubs that have already been established, right? Like the blue bloods, if you will. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Manchester teams, the, the Chelsea arsenal, maybe Tottenham to always be there. Right. Like how do you challenge that? Like, I almost feel like we're Newcastle should be a major and, and they're a mid major, mm-hmm. but now there's shackles on them being able to like, how do you become a major then? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you get out of the financial fair play? I mean, um, I guess, I guess again, it's, it's, it's <clears throat> trying to get uh, more sponsors and more advertising dollars and all on that, you know, the Darren Eels side of things. Right. But um, how do you do that when, you don't have those same players as <laughs> those, mm-hmm. you know, it's like the chicken and the egg. Yes. Like it's, not, it, it, it's set up. I think it's set up to fail anybody other than teams who had spent before financial play came about <coughs> Manchester city. hundred <laughs> percent. <coughs> who said that? Uh, all right. So what's going on? Uh, varsity media, MLS soccer.com OSDB. Yeah. OSDB. Um, we're, 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 you know, I'm kind of, um, you know, working my way, obviously, to opening uh, weekend or week, I guess, because the first match is on Wednesday. Um, so, uh, like I said, this past Monday, I took a look at Colorado and, and uh, you know, how they're attempting a quote, you know, listen, I'm a, I'm a dad. So it's, you know, I throw the puns in there. So it's, you know, the rapid ascent um, ah. up the West. Um ah. This week we're gonna we're, we'll take a look at uh, Columbus. You know they're gonna run it back. It's so hard in this uh, league of parity, but we'll have uh, we'll have that one. Then we'll have a story the following week about Inter Miami, Inter Miami, uh-huh. um, and then uh, we'll we'll do we'll preview each conference and and we'll, we'll get going. Um, Varsity Media got a, um, a Sunday afternoon game, um, um, and I know that you love your. Um, New York City basketball nicknames. We had Boogie Fland, yes, before who who made the McDonald's All American game. There you go. Um, this past Saturday, I had a game that was supposed to be Friday, moved to Saturday because of weather. Um, Magic Mel, <laughs> wasn't, he, up. wasn't he a rapper in 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 the uh, in the eighties? Yes. So he's he's reincarnated to be a sophomore um, guard who dropped thirty four points. Um, against Christ the King on the road uh, in an overtime win for Cardinal Hayes. So uh, that was fun. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, so yeah, this this Sunday I've got a four o'clock game, St. Peter, St. Francis Prep. Should be a good one in the uh, in the Catholic High School League, which I still maintain one of the best leagues in the in the country. So no doubt. Uh, Magic Melon, Cool Mo D. I think they had it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they had a hit sign. I saw uh, them. I saw them at the. Uh, I'm sure they were part of that concert I went to at Yankee Stadium that lasted until like three in the morning. Yes. Um, that was crazy. Yes. And, and make sure that when you interview Magic Mel, that you tell him that that you saw him 
at that concert well, at Yankee Stadium. What I did ask him, John, was I said, listen, you know, you this was a season high, 34 for you. You know, you're a sophomore. This is a huge performance. When did you like when did you feel your shot was gonna drop? Like was it in the pregame warm-ups? He said, No, last week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Love it. Yes. Soundbite city. Yes. Yes. You gotta hang on with that. Uh I know that <laughs> I know that we've gone extra time this morning and the fourth held up the sign and I went right through it. Thank you, my friend. Have a fantastic week. We'll catch up next time. Yeah, buddy.